We're working with paper mache today. It's gonna get a little messy, but despite the messiness, the final project is actually gonna look pretty cool. High five. Hey guys, Ray Pahar from Get Crafty Crafty, and today we're going to be working with paper mache. This is actually gonna be the first time that I've worked with paper mache with you guys, and using a few household items, we're going to create this really cool decomposing skeleton hand. Just in time for Halloween, you can either use this as a table decoration or depending on what your costume is, you can use this for part of your costume. Let's go ahead and get started with today's project. The items that you'll need for today's project include wooden chopsticks, packaging twine or string, a hot glue gun and some hot glue, a variety of acrylic paints, some brown paper bags, used dryer sheets, pliers, butcher paper or newspaper. For your paper mache, you're gonna need your disposable bowl, glue, water, and a small amount of flour. First, you wanna take your chopsticks and for each finger, you're going to create a marker for where the knuckle meets on your finger. You're gonna take your marker and wherever your knuckle bends, you're just gonna create a small little marker and then continue to do that for each finger. As you continue to create the chopstick for each finger, you wanna also label each finger at the end of the chopstick so you know which finger belongs where on your hand. After you've marked off each joint in your chopstick finger, you're going to carefully take your pliers and you're going to bend each joint. You wanna be careful and not break the chopstick just because you want to just bend it so that it's still connected to your finger. Do this to each little part of the joint and continue to do this to all five of your fingers. To shape and give your skeleton hand a little bit more character, you wanna make sure that some fingers are a little bit more curved compared to the others. This will give that cool little claw look for your skeleton hand. Compared to the four other fingers in your hand, your thumb is gonna be a little different just because it has less bendable parts for the chopstick. What's gonna happen is you're gonna actually use the thumb to connect it to the four other parts of your hand and it'll act as your base. For this last part where the other joint would be, you're going to actually cut it and bend it a little different compared to the rest of your thumb just so that it's a place for your hand to actually connect to to the rest of your fingers. To shape and create the joints for your finger, you're going to take your hot glue gun and you're gonna apply a small amount of hot glue on each bend of your finger. This will create the knuckly parts of your fingers and your joints, and then you wanna shape it and let it cool before moving on to the next step. Continue to do this to all of your fingers. After the hot glue joints have dried on each finger, you're going to take your twine and you're going to create the fleshy parts for your finger. Take the twine, wrap it around each finger, and when you get to your joint part, you're going to just create a little bump right over the hot glue so that it actually looks like a little joint in your finger. Continue to do this to all of your fingers until you've covered each one in your twine. It's gonna take some time to wrap all of your fingers in twine but this will actually help you have a really strong hand and if you're going to use this as a prop, it'll definitely make it a lot more durable for your project. After you've wrapped all your skeleton fingers with your twine, you're going to start attaching them together and arrange them so that they start to look like the skeleton of your hand. Take your middle finger and your pointer finger and you're going to use your hot glue to attach them together. After your middle and your pointer finger have dried together, you're gonna then attach your ring finger followed by your pinky. After those two fingers have been attached, you're then going to hot glue your thumb onto the base to create your skeleton hand. After you put your hand together, you could either move on to the next step or as an optional part of this project, you can create the pieces to create the arm of your hand. To create the arm pieces for your hand, you're going to take two chopsticks and you're going to tightly roll it onto a piece of butcher paper create the bones for your arm. Using hot glue, make sure that the chopsticks are glued inside and held in place. For this project, you can use two of your chopstick bones to create the arm for your skeleton hand if you want a bigger piece. But for this project, I'm just gonna take that one piece, fold it in half and create a broken bone so that it looks a little bit more creepy when it's all put together. 
use hot glue to attach your pieces together. Something that I forgot to mention in the items list is you're going to also need some masking tape for this project. Once everything has been attached onto your hand, you're going to use masking tape to create the uh, fleshy connections onto your finger to make it look a little bit more like a hand. You want to attach them in between your fingers and around your bones so that everything is held together. After you've applied your layer of masking tape onto your hand to make it a little bit more fleshy, you can use bits and pieces of butcher paper or scrap paper and attach it onto your hand to give it a little bit more definition and a little bit more of a, I guess, fleshy feel for your hand. Apply it throughout the piece and continue to cover it with masking tape. Once you've applied all the masking tape onto your hand, it's time to move on to the messy part of this project and we're going to create our paper mache. In your mixing bowl, you're gonna create a mixture that has two thirds glue and about one third of water. Combine this all together to create your paper mache. Once everything has been mixed together in your paper mache, you're going to cut strips of paper from your brown paper bag and let it soak inside your paper mache. Carefully take pieces of your paper mache and carefully start wrapping your hand with your paper mache. It's gonna be a little hard to get on at first, but once the pieces start to dry, you'll actually start to create the base and the structure of your skeleton hand. Continue to do this until your hand has been covered with your paper mache. When you're applying your paper mache onto your skeleton hand, you really wanna focus on getting the paper mache and the paper onto the fingers really tightly so that they actually look like fingers. To add a little bit of texture onto your project, you can use a small amount of flour and brush it onto your paper mache to both harden it and give it a little bit more detail when you're putting your piece together. Another pro tip for this project to add both strength and texture onto your skeleton hand, you can use used dryer sheets, cut them up into strips, and apply them over your paper mache to both give a nice texture onto your hand and to also strengthen it because of its fibery uh, structure, you can it'll actually strengthen your paper mache. Continue to use these techniques and cover up your skeleton hand. It's gonna take about a day for your skeleton hand to actually dry up, but I made this one about a day ago just so that I can show you guys what the finished project would look like. The last part of this project is to actually paint your hand to make it look like it's been decomposing. I'm gonna use a combination of brown, black, gray, and white to paint the hand. I usually start off with a base color of black where I know all the sharper details are going to go. To add a little bit of shading onto this project, I'm gonna use a little bit of gray paint and paint around the black areas with the gray paint to create a shading effect. After applying my gray and black, I'm then going to use some brown paint to shade and fill in the rest of the hand. To add a little bit more texture and some really cool detail onto your hand, I'm gonna actually apply a small amount of flour onto the hand, and I'm gonna paint the flour into the hand to create more detail. When you're working with your paper mache, it's actually gonna take a good amount of time for all your pieces to get put together, dry up, and look like a really convincing skeleton hand. That's why for this project, I ended up making three different skeleton hands just so that I could show you guys all the different parts of this project. But hopefully with the techniques that I showed you with the dryer sheets, the flour, and the paper mache, you guys were able to create a really cool uh, skeleton hand that looks like it's been decomposing for a while. It's been a while since I've done a giveaway, and as I was putting this project together, I came across my Harry Potter Elder Wand, which if you guys haven't seen this yet, make sure to check out our Harry Potter Elder Wand tutorial right up here. And this is a cool project that I made a while back, but I never actually figured out what I was gonna do with it. So as a fun little giveaway, I'm gonna give this to one of you guys, and all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video, and in the comment section below, let me know what you guys are gonna be for Halloween. If you guys are participating in this giveaway, make sure you have the permission of your parents, and check out all the cool little descriptions and the details of this giveaway in the description below. Other than that, make sure you check out our last two videos, which were the cinnamon roll, the pumpkin spice cinnamon rolls, and our color-changing galaxy goo. 
Uh, if you guys do make this project, make sure you share with me either on my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter using the Get Crafty Crafty hashtag. Other than that, good luck with this fun little giveaway. I'm going to choose a winner in about a week or so, and it's going to be announced in a future video. Hopefully you guys had fun making this project. I'm rambling again. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and stay crafty.